your inner garden is your digestive system, your inner garden and your microbes and your beautiful bacteria and viruses and fungi, all these beautiful living, um, living beings, living organisms. And uh, we need to tend that inner garden. Um, and we're finding out more and more you know, because of antibiotics, um, you know, that just wipe out our inner garden. And then we have to, and then, and suppress our immune system for like three months afterwards. Uh, anyway, and it's this balance of making sure that the, you know, the good guys are winning. But it, I know it sounds a terrible good versus evil, but, or good versus bad, but we've got, you know, we have those very, very helpful microbes that are helping us digest our food, that are giving off anti-cancer substances. They're just beautiful things, and we need to tend that garden, and we really have lost uh, the whole idea uh, over the last probably 50 or 60 years uh, of the idea that we need to be tending what's, I keep going like this over my belly, right? Oh, over my digestive tract here, here you go. Um, we need to tend that area, we need to pay attention. What do you do with a garden? You think about what you want growing there. You think about how to nourish it. You think about what wonderful things are going to be, you know, harvested. So for us, it'll be, we'll, we'll be harvesting health. We'll be harvesting vitality. We'll be harvesting longevity. We'll be harvesting strong immune systems. You know, that whole thing. So that was the idea of tending the inner garden. This whole idea of what are we doing? Are we tending? Most of us are not. So Thursday night, um, so excited to do this. I love to set the stage of what's going to be uh, covered over the weekend because the weekend time, while it will have, uh, you know, the why, I always cover the why in my cooking classes or anything else I'm teaching. Uh, it will have the why, but it'll also have the how, right? Saturday, uh, pardon me, Friday and Saturday are really technique workshops. They are how to do this. Um, and of course, Again, in there, I'll talk about why we do the how. But uh, Thursday night, I'm really hoping my, my intention is to set the stage for everyone uh, that can attend and talk about this concept of, you know, the inner garden and what we need to be doing um, if we want to achieve, you know, vital health and we're vital and we're, you know, we're strong, we're flexible, we are resilient we're resilient when those when those flus come around uh there's no reason for us uh to be sick uh we can be vital so yeah thursday night very exciting i love to have people come i'll answer questions but i'm really going to set the stage of why we do what we do um and then again the the friday and saturday will be the little the little hows they're not little, they're three hour blocks, I think, but how we do what we do to really, um, you know, uh, just invigorate this, invigorate, nourish, tend to our inner landscape. First of all, there's a lot of material to cover, um, but there are different learners, number one, some people learn by hearing, some people learn by seeing, some people, everybody learns by tasting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we get the Q&A, et cetera. So I feel like I really cover all the bases of adult learners, adult learning styles. Um, and also because, um, you know, it's important as a teacher to set the stage again of what is it we're trying to do. So that's the lecture. And it's not a lot of lecture, like they're gonna be sitting there yawning because mu things must be fun or else, you know, we don't do them uh, or else people don't retain the information. But so some lecture, yes, uh, the why, again, that's why, why, why. Some demo, yes, that's how, 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 how do we do this? Uh, some tasting, because if you can taste the food, um, two things happen. One, um, you have a sense of what it's supposed to, 
uh, show up like when you are uh, doing it yourself. You say, oh, that's how it's supposed to taste. And the other thing that happens is you get that, you know, you get that, um, you experience the yumminess, the body, the whole body experiences the nourishment. And once you experience the nourishment, mind cannot tell you that this is not something you want to do. So, mm. you know, when you taste it, you know, it's that tasting. I've always said that if I can get someone to taste the food, they're in. I've got them. I've got them. And so when I had a, um, an organic and biodynamic catering company way back when, 2000, you know, way back when people thought organic meant, you know, brown rice and tofu. Now we know it's growing, right? How do we grow things? How do we plant all those things? Um, I would say to people, if I can just get them to take, taste one bite, you'll get it. You'll get it. So, and then of course, Q&A we always have because I love to the questions invoke the answer. So, you know, I teach to what people need to hear, if you will. This is, I've been on a quest for probably more than 10 years now, more than 10 years of looking at the connection between how the brain works and how the gut works. And that's when I found the GAPS diet, the gut and psychology syndrome. I did lots of research, um, et cetera. But I, even then, even then, um, we were seeing mostly brain function, um, brain function issues connected to gut function issues. So that's been around for about, you know, 10, 15 years. Uh, really. But in those 10, 15 years, now we're seeing that everything is connected, everything. Okay, so a car crash, maybe not. But when we have a physical symptom in the body, we are absolutely finding that um, it, is, it is connected to what's happening in the gut. And so, yes, we're seeing more and more and more connections being made and number one, more and more connections being made in terms of diagnosis and going, oh, so they've got a leaky gut. So the immune system is down. So they've got an autoimmune disease. Oh, they've got a leaky gut. So everything that's showing up in terms of symptoms, physiological symptoms, and many, many, many psychological symptoms, mental symptoms, you know, how we think, what our mood is, is being connected to the gut function. And so we've, we've got people kind of looking more, like the connections have become more obvious. And I, so I think in that, you know, we're really seeing, yes, this symptom is connected to the gut. That symptom is connected to the gut. This autoimmune diseases, gut, baby, you've got one. There's over, golly gee, last time I checked, there were over 85 known autoimmune diseases. And so if you've got an AI, we need to look at your gut and we need to tend to that garden and we need to fix those walls, baby, they're crumbling. So um, easy to do, easy to do with food. So that first, yes, we're seeing many, many, many more uh, diseases, symptoms, uh, connected physical symptoms, you know, psychological symptoms, emotional symptoms, you name it, we've got it connected to gut health. That's the first thing. story but there are many many reasons why people get leaky gut um, one of them uh, what we've started with is we find that many more children children are being born with leaky gut these days probably for the last at least the last 10 years maybe the last 20 years because they're being born to mothers that had leaky gut and fathers that had leaky gut so we have to remember that this is something that's passed on and so that's we have to get our head around that. Children these days are being born with leaky gut, pretty much in America, okay? Not all over the world because of what we do uh, with our food supply, uh, what we've done since the 50s, really. Okay, so that's just one thing to think about. But why did those moms have leaky gut? Well, some of it, there's so many reasons. Some of it uh, we can connect to... Um, uh, if you've ever had, if you've been on long-term prescription medication, that can do it. And prescriptions meaning things like birth control pills or steroids, 
Okay, long-term prescription medication can cause uh, leaky gut. Ibuprofen, taking Advil and ibuprofen, um, you know, all the time, like two, three times a week, two, three times a day is going to blow holes in your gut. Uh, genetically modified organisms, all those wonderful, not GMO foods uh, that are that have um, been crafted to blow apart uh, uh, the insects that try to eat them. They're, they will cause leaky gut uh, if you eat a lot of them. So that's what's GMO in this country? Anything, almost, almost anything that's not organic. So 90% or more of the corn in this country is genetically modified. 90%, 95% of the soy in the world is genetically modified. So these types of things, if you've ever been on antibiotics, remember that in the 70s and the 80s, antibiotics were given out like candy. You have a sniffle, take an antibiotic. Take this one and that one and broad spectrum and this and that and you know, antibiotics, add in vaccinations. There's just so many things from the food supply and what the chemicals on the food supply, in the food supply, the genetically modified organisms, the GMOs in the food supply to, you know, the medical system and all these things we've just been uh, taking into our bodies. Uh, there's all sorts of reasons why we have leaky gut. And um, some of it too really has to do with uh, whether or not uh, we're having enough sources of collagen, sources of protein, animal protein uh, coming into the body, um, and full spectrum vitamin C complex, not ascorbic acid, because you need C to, ha to weave, it's the weaver with the collagen. So, you know, everything from diet, what, what you are or are not eating, to what you have or have not experienced medically, uh, to how they're growing our food. I mean, you name it, it's like this, it's not just one answer. Oh, this is why we have leaky gut, one thing. No, it's all the things. And there are generations of people uh, now in our country, anyone, I, I tend to say anyone that was born after 1960 probably has a leaky gut in America, unless you lived under a rock or on a farm, which didn't use sprays, you know, glyphosate. Let's just go there for a minute. Um, there are um, things that will really blow holes in the gut. And when we're talking about the gut, we're talking about the small intestine. There's one more piece, which is lectins. So, you know, there was a big, big push by the USG um, to eat a lot of grains. And frankly, if you don't know how to prepare your grains correctly, you're going to have problems with your gut. So, you know. That's the beginning of the end. You know, people often just don't want to feel bad again. And so when you're eating well and you're nourishing your body and you're feeling good, you're feeling vital and you're, 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 you're thinking it's clear and you know, your body is flexible and you're feeling strong and you're feeling good. And then you go out and you eat a pizza, you know, not, not, I don't want to disparage pizza. I'm Italian. I love pizza, but you go out and eat a Domino's or you go out and eat processed food, any processed food, you're going to feel it because your body has gotten to a place where it really is um, used to real food it's used to good food it's you it's not used to toxins so you're going to feel it so often what we find is that this is really a way of life it's a change um and people choose it they choose to feel better they choose to feel healthy they choose to have a strong immune system it's just what happens for many people now does that mean uh you can never go out again and eat in a restaurant no does it mean that you can never have a pizza again? No, but you will be, uh, you'll find yourself far more, um, what should I say, selective is a nicer word than picky, but you'll find yourself selective and say, oh, you know what? I can go and have real pizza, which means a, you know, a pizza that's made in a traditional way without all the processed chemical ingredients, um, you know, that are found in, chain pizzerias, if you will, all over the United States. You know, you, you're gonna go and find that restaurant who does, oh, they do real, 
pizza dough. I can have that. So um, again, many, many people choose just to eat well for the rest of their lives. It's an education. Um, and, and people do go back and have, you know, um, have other food. They, they'll go out to eat and whatever. So what we're working towards is a robust, vital, healed uh, body. And when you have that, you can go off the path once in a while. Sure, no problem. And then you'll come back. But for the most part, you're not going to go back to eating. Um, I'm going to use the word crappy. You know, you're not going to go back to eating processed food that isn't really food. Um, most people won't do that because they know what the cost is. And the cost is health, vitality. You know, um, they want to feel good. So... It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. Learn, um, taste, um, enjoy. You know, we'll have a wonderful, it's always fun when I'm out there teaching. I love to have people who want to take back their health uh, by getting back in the kitchen and having some understanding. So I'm thrilled to be coming. I'm thrilled with the work that uh, you're doing there. And um, I'm looking forward to a wonderful, wonderful couple of days of teaching. I do hope people will come out for that free uh, Thursday night uh, session where we, you know, get to meet and greet and talk about the whole weekend and things like that and why this is so important. And one more thing, it doesn't have to be hard, folks. It can be really, really easy. And that's my job. My job is to write the books and to do the charts and to um, answer the questions so that you can really, um, you know, do this with ease. It's not supposed to be hard. It's just, yeah, it's not supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be easy. That's what, that's what I look forward to.